Hi, welcome to lecture number three. In this lecture, we will continue our discussion about PPF and look further into its details. We start by talking about allocative efficiency to PPF. Allocative efficiency means that the particular mix of goods of a country produces, it represents the combination that the country most desires. For example, we know that often a society with a younger population has a preference for production of education over the production of healthcare. And if the society is producing the right quantity or the right level of education that the society demands, then we can say the society is achieving allocative efficiency. However, at the most basic level, and to simply put it, allocative efficiency means that the producers supply the quantity of each product that the consumers demand. And note this, only one of the productively efficient choices will be the allocative efficient choice. For example, in order to achieve allocative efficiency, a society with a young population will invest more in education and as the population ages, the society will shift resources toward healthcare because the older population requires more healthcare than education. Now, to even make this more simpler to you, refer to your example in the graph on the slide and imagine your country as a society. So, we can say a society with more musicians might achieve allocative efficiency at point B or point C, right? Provided they need more CDs for music writing or listening, etc. Whereas, a society with more tourists might achieve allocative efficiency at point D or E. This is because there will be more demand for pizza. Hope that makes sense. After looking in some of the most important concepts and ideas of PPF, I'm guessing some of you must be wondering, so is that it? Are we stuck with the limited resources and confined by the PPF line? And that we don't grow no matter what? Apparently, that's not the case. And the good news is, our countries, our economies, do still grow. And when they grow, the PPF curve shifts outward, as you can see on the diagram here. For a fact, during the past 30 years, production per person in the European Union has more than doubled, whereas during the same period, production per person has also doubled in North America and has expanded by an even larger amount in some Asian economies. The question is, how does this growth happen? This happens due to a lot of factors, but today we are going to note the most common two. And one is technological change, the second one is capital accumulation. Note, capital accumulation also includes human capital which is basically the skill and knowledge we human possess. So more skill you have, your human capital rises. For instance, after watching this video, if you've learned something, if you feel a bit productive, then feel free to proudly brag that your human capital went up by a notch. So once again, these factors causes our economies to grow in addition to many other factors. Now, economic growth is a good thing. Now, obviously, a lot of scopes open up for both the country and the citizens living inside the country. But please note this, economic growth and expansion of production possibilities still 
does not overcome scarcity and neither does it avoid opportunity cost. They still remain inside the economy no matter how much the country grows. The country will still face a trade-off in the choices that make the economy grow. And the faster we make production grow, the greater is the opportunity cost of economic growth. Think it like this. New technologies and new capital have an opportunity cost, right? And so, to use resources in research and development and to produce new capital, we must and must decrease our production of consumption goods and services. If a country devotes all its resources to producing consumption goods and none to research and capital accumulation, we can say that its production possibilities in the future will be as the same as it is today. As a matter of fact, it won't grow, neither will it will increase. By the way, consumption goods are those goods which are directly used for satisfaction of human wants and they are not used in the production of other goods. Now therefore, in order to expand our production possibilities in the future, we must devote fewer or lesser resources to producing consumption goods. Having said that, we must and must include more resources to accumulate capital and developing technologies so that when the future comes, we can produce more and more consumption goods. Having said that, I end this lecture. Thank you and goodbye.